I'm walking the full Camino de Santiago Portuguese route from Lisbon to the city of Santiago de Compostela. I'm documenting my whole experience in this video diary so that you can use it as kind of like a video guidebook. I cover stuff like how to pack for a month on the Camino de Santiago, what you should bring each day in your day pack, how to look after your feet, if you can't find the exact information that you're looking for in this particular video, just go onto my channel and have a browse around there to my other Camino videos. You should find the information that you're looking for in one of them. If you still can't find it, just go on to the comment section and leave a comment there and I'll answer it as soon as possible. And if you want to, you can also go onto my website, travelandculture.ie and send me an email through the contact form and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Buen Camino! about the famous last 100 kilometers of the Camino de Santiago. So, uh, as I said in like early on in these videos that the, the Camino de Santiago is like a, pil a, a network of ancient pilgrimages into the tomb of St. James in the city of Santiago de Compostela in northwest Spain. So, um, some of these pilgrimage routes spread like the whole width of Spain. So people, for example, French people who live in France when they started out their pilgrimage, they would have basically walked from, from the French-Spanish border, the Pyrenees, right across the north of Spain and into the city of Santiago. When people from Portugal, um, down around the Algarve wanted to, they would have started at the Algarve or Lisbon and walked straight up all the way through Portugal. Therefore, the way from France is called the French way and the way from uh, Portugal is called the Portuguese way. There are like eight or nine different official routes. But the last 100 kilometers, so if you go into Santiago, the city, and then 100 kilometers out in any other direction, that's called the famous last 100 kilometers. And if you walk that um, and you get collect two stamps every day in your pilgrim passport, when you get into the city of Santiago, you're entitled to, or you can claim your Compostela, which is basically a certificate saying, yay! So like hundreds of thousands of pilgrims all around the world do this. They, they fly in probably to the city of Santiago itself or a, a local airport and get the bus back 100 kilometers and walk in on average of about 25k a day. So you can basically do that section in a week and it's a perfect holiday for you and a group of mates. Um, it doesn't need to be like a pilgrimage as in you pray all the time if you're not religious. I mean, you can come along and try the local produce which is generally wine and cheese and nobody ever complains about eating wine and drinking cheese together. The other way around even. Drinking wine and eating cheese together. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone, I'm tired. So, um, yeah, so I highly recommend that if you're going off on your first pilgrimage or you want to try the Camino, like for, for adventurous reasons or spiritual reasons, that you do the last 100 kilometers. It's a wonderful sampler, it'll definitely challenge you. And I promise you, by the time you get into Santiago, you'll feel such a sense of achievement. The Camino isn't really physically hard. It's not, that's, that's not the fact of it. Uh, the Camino is a mental challenge. It's not about uh, how fit you are because you can walk five, 10 kilometers a day if you want and stop. Like I've walked 20, 30 kilometers a day with my knees in agony, take a couple of ibuprofen and anti-inflammatory and just go for it. But it, honestly, it's all in your head. And if you, uh, if you can, can keep telling yourself that you can do it and you can stay positive in your head, like honestly, there's nothing that you can't do. And I feel that right now. I feel like there's nothing I can't do. And that was the whole idea of doing this walk, so I would get this feeling. I've gotten it, so I'm a little bit proud and I wanted to share that with you today. And honestly, I really think that if you're going through a little bit of shit in your head, which everybody does, it's not human to say that you don't go through shit, everybody goes through shit. We all have obstacles to overcome and, uh, uh, and stuff to process. And if you're going through something and you're kind of not feeling like you can figure it out, if you're, you're stuck on a problem, Get out for a walk. Get out for a walk. Don't stop walking until you've at least begin to chew the fat off your problem and I promise you walking will help you figure it out. It does.
So you know all along I was kind of struggling with um, carrying the beast, yeah, the big backpack. And I think actually that carrying that in the first few days is what destroyed my knees because my body wasn't used to carrying that kind of like 10 or 15 kil kilos more. So now that I'm on the last 100 kilometers, um, it was really easy to find a company that would transfer, transfer even, sometimes I speak English, sometimes I do, <laughs> transfer my luggage. So basically, there's a car coming back. So basically, uh, I booked luggage transfer from, what town was I in? Oh, Chewy, from a town called Chewy. So they're going to collect my luggage every morning from whatever hostel or hotel I'm in, in the towns along the, the dot towns along the way. So last night Redondela, tonight Ponte Vedra, and they'll collect my baggage from the hot reception in the morning and drop it to the next hotel. I just send them a text saying tonight I'm staying in X hotel and when I arrive my uh, my da -da 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 backpack will be there waiting on me. Now, what I wanted to say to you is, if you couldn't be arsed with organizing and booking, like trawl and through booking.com, hostel.com, Google, maps, all of that stuff, for booking your accommodation every night and having your luggage transferred like ringing the company and trying to get that out like that kind of a lot of logistical work you don't have to do that yourself if you don't want to i do i'm doing it because it's cheaper and i'm just kind of up for a bit of an adventure and and that's the type of camino trip that i personally want to do i want it to be a little bit tough because i've done the posh pilgrimage a few times and now i want a bit of a challenge so i'm choosing my way of doing it but I'm saying to you, don't be daunted by that. There's ways around it. There's millions of ways to skin a cat. There are companies, at least three or four of them based in Ireland alone, that basically wash and polish your Camino for you. So you just ring them, you say, I want to walk the last 100 kilometers from here to there. And they say, voila, there's your tickets. Accommodation every night booked, luggage transfers every day booked, airport transfers booked, transfers booked. You can do that. So don't let the whole administration of it all put you off. There are companies that do it, um, just look them up and they'll sort you out. Or you can do the way that I did it and just be a bit more responsible and a bit more proactive and uh, organise it yourself and that way it's going to work out cheaper. But up to yourself, just don't let the logistics of organising stuff put you off because you don't have to do that.
waiting for Santiago de Compostela is right up in front of me. I'm nearly there. Not just yet, tonight I spend the night in a town called Caldas de Rey. They're very traditional in Galicia, so you'll see them all along the Camino route. And basically what they are is a grain storage from, from history, like before supermarkets were around, obviously. So the, you'll see that they're always up on stilts. And the reason for that is so that rodents don't eat the, the storage throughout the winter. That milestone says 10 kilometers outside of Santiago de Compostela. That means that I am two hours away from finishing the full Camino Portuguese de Santiago from Lisbon to the city of Santiago de Compostela, which on a map driving a car, it's like 500 kilometers. But that's going direct on the motorway. The old Camino pilgrimage route has other ideas. So you weave in and out of the landscape, up around the hills, in through the back of the farmland. So in total, I've actually walked more like 700 kilometers. Can we get a yay me, please? Yay me! I'm stuck for words um, I'm kind of feeling mixed emotions like obviously I'm proud and I feel like a massive sense of achievement but I it's over now and I'm a little bit emotional um, I thought I'd be really happy about this but I'm kind of sad that it's over um, I have to wake up tomorrow and I won't I don't I know what to do with myself. <laughs> so was, the biggest lesson has been that it's not about the destination, it's just been about the journey because actually getting here is a bit of an anticlimax. The place is beautiful and but I really enjoyed the journey. 